remind everyone present that the meeting is being live streamed as well as recorded via the internet and this recording archived for future viewing. Could all participants please mute themselves when not speaking in order to avoid any background noise or feedback when other participants are speaking? If a participant wishes to speak, can they please put their hand up if they can be seen on screen or use the raise hand function? Please ensure that all debate is raised verbally and not via the chat function for the sake of the recording. The chat function may be used to highlight any technical issues and or to grab the attention of the chair or democratic services officer. If any participant has difficulty hearing or being heard when they are addressing committee, then they should let the chair or democratic services officer know. If they have a webcam, they should try turning this off as this will help with broadband or Wi-Fi bandwidth so that they can at least be here and be heard. And I'll hand over to you, Chair. Thank you very much, Kathleen. OK, first item on the agenda. By the way, this is the agenda um, for Welsh Church Act Committee dated the the 2nd or well, 3rd of October, I think it is now. So can, first of all, only apologies for absence. I think it might be the 4th of October, Chair. I think you are right. I will say I'm behind the times. Yeah, um, so quickly it's going. <laughs> So, OK, you're quite correct. It's the full thoughts over. So the first one, can I have an apologies for absence, please? Yes, I've received um, apologies from Councillor Drake, Chair. Thank you very much. OK, second item uh, in the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of June. Are you happy for me to sign as a true record? Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Cox, and thank you, Councillor Charles. OK, now we receive declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest for this meeting? Yes, Councillor Cox. Uh, it's uh, agenda, agenda item six, investment management strategy. Um, there's a list of alternative investment providers uh, which you may consider. Uh, I'll declare an interest at that point because uh, I'm clerk of the trustees of the Evan Jenkins charity and one of our wealth advisors for that charity is Charles Stanley. Thank you. So will you withdraw from that item then? Uh, I, I will withdraw from the section when you talk about wealth advisors. I think I can safely join in the rest of that uh, item though. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Cox. OK, any other um, declaration of interest? No, I don't seem to have any. OK, thank you very much for that. OK, we now go on to agenda item four, application for financial assistance. Chance two, I think Gemma's presenting this. We also got a late item on this as well. OK, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so um, the initial allocation for applications for financial system uh, assistance, even the 21-22, is £45,000. Um, the original appendix, a that I circulated had thirty thousand um, pounds um, listed down in terms of applications, and then there was a late application for a further two thousand three hundred and fifty four pounds. Um, I can share those on screen. I think. Yeah. Okay. Can everyone see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, brilliant. Can, so if I just you. run through them from the top. Yeah. Um, so St Mary the Virgin Church, Wembo, um, repointing of the church tower and porch. Um, so the total project cost is sixty one thousand six hundred, um, and there are various other um, grant applications in progress. Um, so there's a proposal to award the full five thousand pound that's being requested, but in principle pending confirmation of the other grant applications. Um, the second application, St Peter's Church in Peterston. Um, again, um, similar uh, roof internal structural and water ingress repairs. Um, this is a grade two listed church. Total project cost of um, £12,935. Um, and we're proposing to award the full £5,000. Lantwick Major Tennis Club, uh, installation of flood lighting. Um, so the intention is to install LED flood lighting to all the courts um, and the floodlights will be available to anyone who hires a court, but there'll be a small charge um, that will pay for the costs and the upkeep of the floodlights. We have previously made awards to um, tennis clubs 
um, and um, it is picked up within, um, I think there's a social and recreation um, aspect of the grant um, that we can award under. Um, so the proposal is to award the full £5,000. Um, so this is an application uh, recommended by Cardiff Council, the Parish of Christchurch Roth, um, contribution to the funding of a replacement community hall. Um, so um, the community hall hasn't actually reopened following COVID um, because of the condition of the hall and the poor ventilation and the, just the general um, facilities. Um, the proposal is to award the full £5,000. This is a large project. The total project cost is £626,000. Um, there is a shortfall in funding, in, currently in excess of 100000 Um, So the proposal is to award in principle pending a confirmation that the scheme can proceed. Cornwall Baptist Church, again recommended by Cardiff Council. Um, a scheme to alleviate dampness in the church external walls. Um, again, another church that's being used for community facility also. Um, the total project cost is 8,280 and a proposal to award the full 5,000 pounds. Peter's Church Roos, um, carpet for extended church building, which is also being used as a community hub. Um, proposal to award the full 5,000 pounds. And the total project cost is £8,598. Um, and then just to pick up the late application, um, that was um, for St Hannah's Church in Langan. Um, this is the conservation and repair work to the porch, niche and statue at the entrance to the church. Um, total project cost of three oh, of £3,139 and, and we're proposing to award the £2,354, which is a 75%. Um, and we have actually now received that information, the financial accounts and the bank statement. Yeah. So we would be able to award um, in full at this point. So that's the total grant award proposed of um, £32,354. Are there any questions on those applications? OK, yeah, I'm just going to ask, is there any member got any questions before I ask some questions? OK, I don't seem to have any. Yes, Councillor Cox. You're muted, Councillor Cox. You're still muted, Councillor Cox. Right, I'm not, no. I'm not fast enough on the, on the most, I'm afraid. Yes. So with that extra money, Two thousand three hundred and fifty-four. Does that mean that we have less than four thousand pounds? Is it? I think left. I think for the rest of the I year. I think we've got about two thousand eight hundred pounds left um, for mm. the remainder of the year, um, which obviously is a very small sum. Um, so so we, you, we 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 will be talking about reserves and transferring money before long, will we? Well, um, I think previously where we've had such a small amount of funding remaining, we have um, not accepted any further applications in year. Um, so um, we can, um, at the moment, we where we have received applications since the closing date, we've said that we don't know what the position is and we will advise people after committee. Um, but we do have reserves that we can draw down if, if members want to make a further award in year. Um, but yeah, we would struggle to make uh, many awards with the amount of funding that's remained in, in year. I got, I think I got, Chairman. does that answer that question, Councillor Cox? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, I got Catherine, I think, on Democratic's got her hands up. Yes, Chair. Um, sorry, I should have probably interjected at the start, but um, it would be good if committee could just give formal confirmation that they're happy to accept the late application because we said it was fine yeah, to circulate it. That's a, very, that's a very good point. Is committee happy to, to accept the late to be considered? That's fine. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's fine. I just wonder if we can go to the proposal. Are we happy to recommend those proposals? Subject to making sure we got all the right necessary documentation. I think and the, the indication is I get yes for members. Anyone dissenting on that? No, I haven't seen anyone. 
So I think we're happy to award that sum of money. OK, given what you said, Gemma, about the fact that we're not likely to look at other applications for the rest of this financial year. Is that OK, Gemma? Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. Absolutely. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Excellent. That's fine. So we're happy to move on to the next item, which is the annual report and accounts now, which is yours, Gemma, as well. Yes. Gemma Classic, yes, you. you got your hands up again. Sorry, it's me interrupting again. I just wanted to let you know, Chair, and we've had confirmation that Councillor Crowley isn't actually going to be able to get back online, so he'd like his apologies to be noted, please. That's absolutely fine. Quite understand. Thank you. OK, so it's over to you, Gemma, now on annual report and accounts. OK, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so um, these are the annual report and accounts for the year ended um, 31st of March 2021. Um, I won't go to, into a great deal on the investment elements because we'll be picking that up in the next item. Um, the, um, the fund value at year end was 5.23 million, uh, which was an increase on the previous year, 253,000. Um, and this is quite a good recovery on the loss that we saw as at the 31st of March um, 2020. But this is something that I think um, we would have expected to see given the um, nature of our investments. Um, there, it was also um, an increase of 8k um, on unrestricted, unrestricted funds, um, 5k of which was um, an allocated granting year that was carried forward. Um, so our reserves at year end sort of 120,000. And just to pick up a couple of key items, um, as I say, the investments had recovered um, well, although the income was was down again on the previous year. And we've seen a general um, reduction in year. Um, I know there were some um, restrictions on dividends as a result of the um, previous financial year. Um, but obviously, that uh, falls far short of our £40,000 target. Um, but then you can see on the um, page on the statement of financial activities um, in the appendix um, that gain of 253,000 on the investment. Um, our um, debtors um, are, are relatively small. That's the amount of um, income that was outstanding um, for quarter four at the end of the financial year. Um, and then creditors that but that largely is attributed to um, grants um, that haven't been physically um, paid over at year end, been allocated in year and um, an outstanding audit fee as well. Um, so um, if uh, members are happy to um, recommend the accounts for um, approval um, to be signed by the chair, and then they would now go forward for the independent examination to be carried out by Audit Wales. Um, and then with a view to getting them signed off by the end of um, January, which is when we need to lodge the accounts with the Charities Commission. I'm happy to take any questions on the accounts. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, sorry, Gemma. I'm just wondering, is any member got any questions to ask about the accounts? I got no indication. So can we happy to approve those accounts to over to go over to Audit Wales for them to have a final consideration? Yes, I got yes, lots of hands up, which is excellent. So we now move on to the next item on the agenda, which I believe is the investment strategy from yourself, Gemma. OK, thank you very much. And um, so I know that we um, talked about the um, performance of our investments um, earlier on this year, I think it was um, January time. Um, so we're currently holding just shy of two million pounds in investments. Um, so um, at the last valuation that we were forwarded from Tilney, it was 1.981 million. Um, and these are uh, managed by uh, Tilney Investment Planning Limited, although they're currently in the process of going through a merger. So um, it will shortly um, have a new name. Um, we are also holding 3.231 million investment properties. Um, so this report is um, reviewing 
um, what investments we hold and um, trying to come up with a um, some options for how we proceed in respect of, um, of, of our investments. Um, so um, the first um, part is paragraph 2.2 and this lists down all the uh, land assets that we hold. And these values are based on the last um, formal valuation we had carried out um, by Addison Young um, as at 31st of March 2019. Um, so um, we, we get about £18,000 of investment income on those land assets. Um, and obviously, as a uh, committee you're aware, we've had a number of um, inquiries in respect of um, purchasing some of those land assets. Um, so um, it's an option for um, trustees to consider whether they would want um, an external report carried out. I believe we have done this previously, although we haven't got a copy of the report. I think it must have been some time ago, um, looking at um, a strategy in respect of those land assets. Um, and so that's um, relating to the land element of the investments. Um, the most significant part of the report um, relates to our, our current investment. So, um, the current split is set out in paragraph 2.5 to the report, um, showing the vast majority of it um, relates to equities. Um, and um, just recapping that those funds are invested on an ethical basis and managed on a discretionary basis. Um, so our risk level is three, um, which is described as the cautious end of a balanced approach to risk. Um, so. As we can see, going back and looking at the historic um, performance of the um, income elements of the investments. Now, obviously, we need to look at total returns. We need to consider um, capital appreciation as well as um, the income that we're generating um, on the fund. And we can see that the capital growth on the fund has been strong. There are a couple of transfers in. Um, there in 2015-16, the proceeds of um, Southern Down were added to the fund. And then in 16-17, there was a further 10,000 in respect of the um, land sale um, for St Peter's. Um, but we are seeing that our income has been falling um, over the period. So um, we have, I mean, our first port of call was to go back to Tilney to try and um, understand um, whether there are any factors that could be causing this. So um, Tilney has um, stated that um, our risk level would be um, impacting on our return. Um, so one suggest one thing they put forward if we're unhappy with the level of income would be to consider amending our um, risk level to four. Um, which is a slightly less cautious um, end of balanced. And, um, and also, we have been advised that um, the very strict ethical mandate that we're currently operating under um, may also be impacting on the level of income because um, a lot of these um, ethical type investments that are currently in the portfolio um, generate relatively low levels of income albeit the capital growth is quite good. Um, then we've also done some benchmarking in terms of um, what other Welsh church funds are doing. In, um, and none of those authorities um, are invested on a discretionary basis and none of those um, authorities invest in their Welsh church, um, Welsh church funds on um, an ethical basis. Now, I am missing that crucial 2021 piece of information, um, which would be the missing piece of the puzzle, really. And I must um, note that this is purely looking at um, income as a percentage of the total fund, um, and also um, that we're not comparing like with like because our investment is at the cautious end of balanced um, and ethical. Um, 
And we know that these other firms have different risk profiles and no ethical, um, specific ethical allocation. There is um, a difficulty comparing returns, but um, you can see that our return is, well, certainly in the last two years, at the lower end of um, that comparison. So the other authorities that compared against um, are holding their um, investments in income funds. Um, although they all have um, larger funds than the bail. Um, certainly that could be an option for um, how we proceed going forward. So um, in paragraph 2.26 of the report, I've listed down um, some alternative investment providers um, as has been advised by our the Council's Treasury Management Advisors, Link Asset Management. Um, and we were also advised that the full discretionary service um, would not be available on most investment plat platforms unless our fund was in excess of 15 million. So I think our concern, um, as we've been going through this analysis, potentially our fund might be on the um, small side to be um, perhaps benefiting from the full discretionary approach. Um, so at the end of this report, then, um, I set out three options um, in order to proceed. So um, one is that trustees um, remain in the current investment approach with Tilney. Um, and that we um, consider Tilney's advice in respect of amending our risk approach and um, potentially reviewing um, the approach to ethical investments. Um, so this would allow us to potentially, while still maintaining an ethical um, influence on the portfolio, potentially try and bring in some more income driven um, investments into the portfolio. Option two is that we go through a full investment review process, inviting all the parties that have been um, highlighted above um, to um, compare um, the options going forward. And then option three would be that we just focus in in a similar way to the other um, Welsh Church Jack funds um, that we reviewed as part of the benchmarking exercise to look at the purely income um, the collective income investment funds, um, which are listed in, in the third option. So it's really for the committee to consider um, how they would like to proceed, if there's any more information they would like um, to help them make the decision. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gemma, for that um, very concise um, digest of that report. And for, can I thank you for all your effort in that report as well? And I'm sure the committee would like to thank, thank you as well. Um, can I over to members now. Uh, I got Democratic got a hand up, first of all. Very sorry again, Chair. Um, it's regarding the declaration of interest from Councillor Cox. Oh. Um, I, I would advise that if he were to withdraw for part of the deba debate, he probably does need to withdraw for the whole debate um, okay. because he, he's not going to be able to vote if he's absent for part of it regardless, um, oh. if, if that makes sense. So I am very sorry. I think it's just safer to err on the side of caution with this one. Right. You, so you want me to withdraw be, before we discuss uh, risk levels or? Uh, uh, as far as my, as far as I'm aware, I don't think you can withdraw for a specific part of the debate. I right, think I, for, the, for the whole item, it would be. I will, I will withdraw for the for the last and make myself a cup of coffee. I'm so sorry, Councillor Cox. We'll call you That's back in right. as soon as we're ready for you. Thank you. Yes. That's fine. Thank you. OK, open to members now. I haven't got any one indications so far. I've got no one indicating still. OK, in that sense, then, in that case, um, I'm very happy with what you've written so far. I would like to go to number the third approach. I think the first approach is the status quo. And I don't think we, we're getting much income from the status quo. I think the second approach Bear in mind, we only got a fund of two million pounds. We'll take a lot of time. I don't think we're going to make much progress on that. But I think if we're working with the other um, two other councils who've got a similar approach, let's look at number three and let, let's do that. Uh, are, are we happy to support number three as a strategy? I got I got a thumbs up from Janice. I don't get anyone indicating against that. 
Can I check it. whether we can hear Councillor William? Just because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, wishing... fine. Do you want to check if we, Councillor William? Can you hear us? He should be able to activate his microphone and speak. Because I wonder if we, whether we're quiet enough. If Councillor that's William... my concern too, Chair, is if we can't if if we can't know that Councillor William is. Um, able to hear us. So if you'll give me a second, what I'll do yeah. is I'll be calling him on the other mobile number I have for him so I can see whether he is witnessing this and whether he's happy with what you're suggesting. Fine, thank you. My colleague Matt is offering to call Councillor William, so. I mean, oh. there's not much we can do at the moment until Councillor William is either on the call or not. And we need to find that out, obviously. Yes, so we're, we're just trying to get hold of him because if I can get him on the line, I can hold him up on speakerphone and he can speak to you that way. Yes. Um, yeah, we just wait a minute. Yes, ever so sorry if we could just take. No, I understand. It's because. Councillor Cox's declaration, we got, uh, you know, we had a couple of apologies, one just to technical matters, we're in this situation. Yeah, and it, it's just important that, you know, any decision made has yeah, the correct. Yeah, it's got to be um, core, otherwise we'll have to um, have another meeting. Yes. Can so... you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Hello, we can oh, hear you, Stefan. Yeah, it didn't tell me how to unmute. Um, so I've, been, I've been trying to get through to people. Um, so anyway, yeah, just to say, I can hear you, I am happy. <laughs> thank you very much, Stefan. So, no we'll problem. The third approach. All right, thank you very yeah, much. The third approach is fine. I'm so sorry. I've been trying to, to five minutes, desperately trying to pull what's left of my hair out to unmute. Um, the, the other issue is that the other phone number doesn't work for me because um, my IT equipment is not ready until tomorrow. But I understand. Be happy, so, be happy to know that I've heard everything. Happy with the third approach. So, off we go. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good, good. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Brilliant. OK, we're now moving on okay. to the next item on the agenda now, yeah. which is item number seven. If you could invite Councillor Cox back to the meeting, Catherine, please, that'd be great. And Glebe Fields. Give me two seconds, I'll just give him a call. Yeah, sure, yeah. We wait. I'm back. You're back. So, Lorna, I know we got a part one and then we got a part two on this. So if you want to... Do, do, do the part one first and we have to move part two when we get into that. Thank so, you, Chair. Ready, when you're ready, Lorna. Yeah, Lovely. Fine. Thank you. Um, the part one's just to, as an introductory as usual to the part two report on the agenda and it's a bit of an update um, and most of the detail, as I say, is contained in the part two item. Um, this is a, a update subsequent to the June 2021 meeting and more particularly in, re in response to the next steps in respect of the site uh, surveys and other investigations to be obtained in order to consider the, the site's future. Um, so I, I think that's probably all um, I, I need to say on the part one, Chair. I think I think that's right. Um, are we happy to, to move to part two on the report? I can move that and I think we've got a second there from Councillor Cox. 